Hi everybody, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I thought today we'd um, take a quick look at a couple uh, new additions. <laughs> Even though I said I'm not going to buy any more dolls. Um, yeah, so we'll take a look at that. Also, I have some uh, just quick reminders of things that you can find. And I wanted to take a look at um, this shirt. And then I thought um, we could take a look at my process when I get an idea on how that goes from idea to drawing out a pattern to putting it together. And it's not original with me. Um, I saw them, I saw a pair of pants in, uh, on YouTube and I thought that would be fun. It would be fun to do it for me, but it would be fun to do it for a doll. So I thought, why not try it for the doll first <laughs> so I can get the hang of it and uh, see what little nuances I like and that I don't like. And then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do that project. So first off, um, we'll take a look at this shirt. When I did the last video, we went over a lot of clothes that I've purchased and we took into account uh, the semi like mock turtleneck shirts there was the black one there and then also the white one where it just had this huge neckline <laughs> that of course is designed to go over any size of head that you might have on a bjd um but i talked about how i prefer make well of course this is a tank top but i prefer making a neckline tighter up where it's supposed to be and you can do that by having a back closure. So this t-shirt is in the pattern with the side snap pants, MSD size, that we did last time. And I thought we'd look, go ahead and look at this collar and how tight up against his neck it actually fits the way I wanted it to. And that's because we go ahead and forego the giant neck opening and we put the opening down the back so just if you're new to sewing I just wanted an illustration of how different that can be so instead of having a giant neck with the purpose of pulling it over the head you can just alleviate that by having a seam in the back but don't sew all the way up leave an opening and in this one, I actually back tack to give a little more strength to where it opens. And then I take that seam allowance and simply fold it back and top stitch it down. Then I put my little collar on with a snap. There we go. So it will overlap a tiny little bit, just enough for the snap to fit. So it's not going to alter your fit a great deal but it will make that neckline up snug where it should be instead of having a neckline that goes so far out on the shoulders that it just looks weird <laughs> you know so that's kind of what i prefer to do i have had some where if i'm actually sewing on a collar and I have really stretchy fabric and I've cut the collar so it stretches and if I'm using the serger or I believe if you want to attach the collar with a zigzag stitch I think you can get more stretch out of that opening but this head you know I might if this was all stretchy I might have been able to do that but there's no way even with stretch on this fabric that it's going to go over Leo's head even though the shirt fits both of them. So I like to have that closure because it just gives a better look in the front and it's still able to get on any size doll because you've left enough in the back for that opening. So just a quick word on that. Let me set him out of the way here. Then, <clears throat> just a reminder, if you're looking for eye putty, I I had some that was oh like the the sticky putty that you used you know to put posters on a wall and it always dried out um, 
the colored stuff could stain. I mean, it left blue kind of tinted in the resin sometimes. So I like to use the soft silicone earplugs. These are from Walmart. They're the Walmart brand. But I like using these for putting in eyes. And uh, we'll go ahead and open one up. So when you buy them, they're in the uh, pharmacy area. Usually, I think in our Walmart, anyway, they're over by saline solution for, you know, eye contact lenses and stuff like that. But they come in a... I'm not sure how I'm going to do it work next week. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but they come in a nifty little case, and there's 12 in a package. Often, depending on the eye size, if I have a size, oh, I can stretch it on a 14, but usually a 12 and smaller, I can take one of the earbuds and split it in half and use half on each eye. If you have a very large eye, if you're going you know, a 16 to a 20 millimeter eye, you might want one bud for each eyeball, but it's just really nice um, and soft. It stays soft for a long time. And because of this translucent color, I think it just looks nicer, just in case you have a pair of eyes that you really love. They're not actually designed to be big enough for the eye opening in your particular face sculpt and so sometimes you know you'll have a little bit of that putty that will show in the corners of the eyes because the eye that you just absolutely love and it has that iridescent shine to it but it wasn't really big enough to fit the opening or you had to get it smaller because you didn't want a giant iris in there because then they would look like an alien you know all the things that we go through but these are really nice because if it tends to show a little bit on either corner of the eye, around the eye, it still looks very natural because it is that translucent color. So I highly recommend these. I think these were $3.68 or $3.98 uh, package at Walmart. So I know you can get them at other places. The other brand is... I think it's Mac, M-A-C-K, Mac brand, that would be the the brand name, and that's probably what you would find in a store who doesn't have their own store brand. But anyway, just an idea for um, putting in eyes that um, is like my new thing. That's all I use anymore. Then I was very surprised, and I grabbed these to show you guys. I found... Um, at Dollar Tree, at our Dollar Tree, of course now it's Dollar Twenty Five Tree, right? <laughs> oh well, it's still a good deal, I guess. But I found, and now I need. Oh, I have some paper towel. This will work. I need something white behind this. I found. Um, I always pick up eyelashes at Dollar Tree for dolls. But this is the first time I've ever seen eyelashes that are actually little bits separated. So they're meant to be put on in little pieces. But this is so handy for doll eye sizes because they're already divided up very evenly. So you can just take the little sections that you want because sometimes if I have an eyelash that has a really stiff band that's connecting those lashes together and it doesn't want to bend in and fit the exact contour of my eye, I end up cutting it anyway. So I thought this was marvelous. So Dollar Tree had them. I was very surprised. So I did get two boxes. So for $2.50, I have plenty of lashes for some upcoming projects that I'm sure I, I'll get to. But two of those boxes and the brand is Tony so I don't know if you can find those in other places but for uh, the dollar 25 even if you find them in other places they're probably more expensive than at Dollar Tree so that's the other thing I found then <laughs> oh my oh I didn't even know these existed um, I'm not by nature uh, a big Barbie collector Though I do have several 
specific ones that I like. Um, and if you'd like to see those, uh, you can let me know in the comments. There, there's not a lot, but I could show them to you if you enjoy seeing that. Um, but I did look online because there was a specific one I was looking for. And while looking for that one, I came across the new, well, I don't even know if it's new, but it's like a signature line called Looks. And they are fabulous. They're model, um, just very uh, simple, but elegant looking uh, models. There's a whole slew of them. I'll turn this around. Um, because the ones displayed on the back of these boxes are even different. So I don't know if it's like the first series and the second series on how it was put together. But these were the ones that... Um, I have seen uh, so far, and I never, uh, I never knew that they were out. Um, even when I look at Barbie things, most of the time uh, at the places where I go, the Barbie selection is very. Um, how do I say this? <laughs> it's it's more toy-ish. You know, it does. Uh, they don't have a lot of the collector designs. And so I'd never seen these, but I thought they were absolutely fabulous and so beautiful and so handsome. And I thought, I need these. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> so I did order these two and I have them arrive. Have them arrive. I, I don't know if I'll take them out of the box. I like having them to display without getting all dusty. So for now, they'll probably stay in the boxes for a while. But I thought they were absolutely fabulous. I think this guy was about $30. And I think she was a little over $50, which I maybe shouldn't say out loud. But if you're collecting and you want them and you want to know what you have to look forward to. <laughs> and those were the, the best prices that I found. Um, some of her prices were quite a bit higher if you wanted to spend that much. But I went ahead. I found them on Amazon. And uh, I had the shipping out a little bit, so I got a little bit lower price. Um, but anyway, I thought they were fantastic. So I didn't even know they're out there. So if you're a Barbie collector, I'm sure you already have them. But I just thought they were amazing. So I did get those two new additions. <laughs> now I need to stop, right? Oh my goodness. So I have enough. I have enough people I need to keep dressed. And uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's enough of the warm up, I guess. And now we'll go ahead and switch out the camera and we'll take a look at uh, what I want to go ahead and design and how I'm going to go about that. So I'll go ahead and put a picture here if I can capture a still. Um, this is what I want to make. I've done a lot of the harem style pants before. As you know, if you've been on the channel very much, and uh, they're not that hard to do even with my patterns, but this one looked so much more simple, um, and I just I really like the results. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make some of these uh, to make the pattern. I think we'll start with Hua Rong, um, just because I think it'd be fun to fit her because she's tall and curvy and she looks really good in clothes. So. <laughs> We'll go ahead and switch up the camera, get her ready to measure, and uh, draw out a pattern to make these. So here's my Hua Rong. Uh, she was in a long dress that goes with the kimono coat, so I thought, well, we'll get rid of all that fabric so we can get some actual measurements. So as you can see, she has a pretty curvy shape. There's not a lot of give in these. They're not real baggy. This is pretty much what she's shaped like. So compared to a lot of my other dolls, um, she's a lot thicker through here and the bust line and her waist isn't, I mean, it's a very hourglass figure, but her waist isn't tiny. So she's a good sized doll. I think she has a little bit more realistic uh, shaping than some of the others that are just really tall and lanky. Of course, she still has long, long legs and high heel feet. So she's very pretty. 
but we're going to go ahead and measure. Uh, the first thing I want to jot down will be her waist measurement. So we're just going to grab the measuring tape and go around her waist. And a lot of times when I'm working on making patterns, I like to use centimeters just because it's so much easier to divide up numbers on a base 10 system <laughs> than inches to quarter inches. And sometimes it's convenient, but sometimes not. So she has an 8.5, no, 18.5. My little uh, measuring tape just restarts with every decimeter. So let's see, let's get it up here. Actually, it's more like, well, yeah, 8.5. We'll go with 9 just to be safe with the thicknesses of fabrics and everything. So we'll say her waist is 9. Let's get some pencil here. So waist is 9. All right. Then I want to measure how long I want the pant to fall. So she has high heel feet. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm not going to go to the floor with the measurement. So we're going to start up here at her waist. And I'm going to go over the hip so that I'm sure to have enough. And let's see, probably right below the ankle bone. So we've got 39, or well, 38.5, 38.5 centimeters for the length, 38.5. All right, then this is going to be a very important measurement <laughs> because I want to measure from the waist down to where I want, let's see, get her, there we go, get the zero on the waist there, where I want that actual um, amount to come up for the crotch to be, I think I want it about here. So it's not way down by the knees. Some of them are, but I think, well, maybe right at the knee that might be sufficient. So we'll say 23 centimeters. So there we go, put her little top back down. What was that, 20, 23, right? Okay, so 23, to the side, 23. So waist to crotch was 23 centimeters. Okay, and then around the ankle, I know that I want to be able to put it on a doll and the doll does not have the give that the human body does. So I'm going to measure around between the, the front of her ankle and the back of her heel because that's the widest part of the resin that would have to go through the bottom of the pant. So we're going to measure there and that is right at 8.5 so I'm going to give that a 9.5 because I want plenty of room to get her ankle through there so that's 9.5 at the ankle 9.5 ankle and I think I think that's all that we need to do to make this pattern so in case you're wondering uh, when I come to uh, drafting patterns and working on patterns, it's this is like my favorite spot is just on my bed. So <laughs> just I've got room for all my junk. <laughs> and I, can, I can kind of do what I want here. So um, what we're going to do is first, I want a center line, but I want it to be perpendicular. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw a T-square on here and we're going to, and it doesn't have to be center, center in the page just because, oh, 
I did forget one measurement and you're probably shouting it in your head. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's put her arms out again. We've got to get a hip measurement at the widest part of her hip. All right. Let's see here. Would be here. Um, just to make sure this is going to fit around. Boy, that would be a bad one to, to miss out on. So, okay, let's get, let's see, I think probably around here is the, the bum and then the hips. Let's see. Yeah, probably. All right. Let's measure it around here. And we've got a good 30, so we're going to make it wider than that, but 30 would fit for sure. Okay, so there we go. So hips is 30. Okay, so where was I? <laughs> All right. Our up and down line. And I should be taping the paper, but it might jog a little bit. That's okay. All right, so we'll just take halfway down here. <clears throat> and now we'll follow along that line. And I just wanted to get this first line done. And then I'll probably grab a marker so you can see it easier. There we go. Okay. So we have our up and down line. Now the length overall needs to be 38.5 centimeters. So 38.5. The length is going to be 38.5. So we'll put a, a mark for one, then 38.5. Okay, so now I need to add a waistband that I think I want a full centimeter for the waistband. And then I want not quite a full centimeter, probably points like a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to add that on there. And let's see. So if I turn that over, yeah, that's going to give me my waistband for elastic as well as a seam allowance. And then at the bottom, I'll add down to the very bottom seam allowance for him. Okay, so there's our measurements thus far. And this is the center. So we'll go ahead and make that real dark so you can see that line. Oh, I guess I should hold my ruler still. There we go. Okay. So now I know that I wanted that crotch length to be 23 centimeters. So from the actual waist line, we're going to go down 23 centimeters. And I'm going to make a mark there. There we go. Okay. And here comes the fun part. You can decide. I've seen them with several different angles of uh, measurement on the, the triangle that you cut out, but I'm just going to use um, 60, 60 degrees. So it'll be 30 on each side, um, just because I think this one might look, it would be too wide for my waist. So we're going to go with the 30. Well, yeah, I think we're, we'll do 30. I can always change it if we need to. So we're going to put the tip of the triangle right at that 23 centimeter mark on this side. And, hmm. Yeah, I, I think that'll be all right. We'll use the 30. We'll see how it goes. I may end up changing that. I'm just kind of getting an idea. Okay, so then the width needs to be, um, if the hips are 30, that means half of it is 15. So I'm going to go, I want it to be looser, so I'm going to go with 20. 
So what we're going to do is, let's see, make sure our line is still straight. Okay. And we'll adjust our paper a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we want 20 centimeters from the center to be here. So we'll do an up and down line here. And now that we have that line in place, we're going to extend a line for the waistband and the actual cut line. All right. Then our straight edge to extend this line down to the bottom. And then we need to add a seam allowance of about a quarter inch. Okay. About a quarter of an inch there. There. All right. And this is the cool thing about having <laughs> having a, a board with a T-square for lining up your paper because you can just line everything up and double check it with your tools. And as long as that's all checked out, then your lines are going to be straight. Oh, I hear a child coming in. Hey, Bubba. All right, so now we're going to cut the bottom. It goes like this. Okay. So, this is our pattern. There we go. And I did draw that line on the the actual um, the not the sewing line, but for the seam allowance. Okay. So here we go. Now I'm going to have to uh, switch out the camera and grab scissors. Okay, and so now that we have this, I can just cut across the top. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're going to fold it on the center line. So if you have pieces that are symmetrically the same on both sides, it is so nice to just fold on your on your center line and then you only have to cut it once you only have to design half of it <laughs> it's very handy oh let's see if i can learn to fold i hear my kitty coming in he wants attention do you want attention salem okay so now we'll cut and I could lower my table, but you know, that would just take time. Why do that? Hi, Bubba. Okay. How are you doing? How are you doing? Huh? He, um, was having some troubles. I don't know if I've told you guys this. He, um, was having a lot of troubles after we lost his sister. They were litter mates. And um, he all of a sudden started losing weight and he just went down to nothing. He, at his heaviest, he was about 12 pounds, like 11, 12 pounds off and on, but he got down to seven pounds. He was just skin and bones. Of course, we got him to the vet, but it happened within like five days. He just lost so much weight. Um, and you could feel every vertebrae. It was a mess. And uh, so we thought, oh no, he's got the same problem his sister had. Because he is 11. 
aren't you? He's an old man. He's just an old man. Here, come this way. This way so everybody can see your beautiful face. So he's a little old man. Um, and uh, he's 11 years old. And so we thought, oh, no, it's going to be his kidneys. Mm, not kidneys again. And um, But his kidneys were fine. And come to find out, he had, like, they thought it was a, what do they call it, trauma-induced event or incident in that his thyroid just exploded and it was literally eating away his body because his metabolism was on hyperdrive for some reason so now he has to take thyroid medication three times a day <laughs> and um he's very well behaved though he is such a good boy and so now that it's, you know, just what we do, he knows that he gets um, something along with his medicine. <laughs> um, because he has to swallow a pill. And so what we do is he gets two little T-R-E-A-T-S. <laughs> it's not quite time yet, so I don't want to say the word out loud. Because <laughs> he knows what it is. Um, but he gets three little of those bites and um, what that does is it helps the saliva to start in his mouth and uh, he actually gets kind of drooly because he's so excited about that and um, so then that kind of makes it a lot easier for him to swallow the pill that he has to take and then of course because he's such a good boy uh, when he's done he gets a few more little of those to celebrate and so he knows boy that it's you know morning noon and night or like you know late morning and then early afternoon I guess it is a little bit early afternoon um, he knows that those are coming and he'll come and find us and let us know it's not that he loves taking the medicine but he loves the, <laughs> the little bites that go with it so yeah so he had to come and tell me Mom, I think it's time. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this. And this paper, um, if you're new to the channel, you may not have heard me talk about it, but the paper I'm using, I bought um, on eBay. You can probably get it on Amazon as well. It is actually medical table paper that uh, comes in a roll like this. I got two rolls for, I think, 12 49 so it's about six dollars a roll and it's a good tissue paper that's wonderful for doing patterns but you know it's the paper that they pull down the exam table you know between patients but it's wonderful for making patterns because it's you know wide and you can roll out whatever length you need which is very nice so now we're going to cut this piece out and uh, hopefully this will just work the first time. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so then we'll take a look at our pattern piece. Now that we've got it cut out, just in case the lines were kind of hard to see. So it looks like a giant, you know, Santa pants. <laughs> it's kind of what it looks like right now. But what we're going to end up doing, if that'll stay... Oh, I should have got tape, but I didn't. Okay, I'll hold it. Oh, I know. Look at this. There we go. Aha! Uh -huh. A table weight vertically. Okay, so what we're going to do next, and I saw this on YouTube. You can Google tons of it. But what, um, what we do to sew is we cut the fabric to get the two pieces, the bottom... Um, where the legs are is going to be cut on a fold. Let's put this on our, our thing here. So this edge is on a fold. So this will have here and it'll come like this as well. So this will be our pivotal point. So then we're going to sew from the ankle up to this point. And then we're going to pivot that fabric like this and sew down the other leg because this will be on the fold. 
and then that creates the the crotch of the pants and so that's what this is for but this won't actually just be a triangle when you cut the fabric it'll be a diamond because this is on the fold so important point there and then we cut the ankles on the fold um, because then we end up with two of these so then uh, let's see yeah then we go ahead and do the side seams and then gather the waist and hem the pants so here's our pieces we have what looks like our giant Santa pants and we have the piece that will be cut uh, with this on the fold so that is important to do or this can be cut out of another selvage if you have other pieces but it would go right here so uh, time to take this all down so we can cut some fabric so I found some fabric I'd like to use it's a dark blue on white print that I found I think I found it at Walmart and I thought it was really cute but the deal is it is already cut into uh, three squares and I didn't realize it was already cut that way so I laid it out and my pattern piece will fit so I can go ahead and put my pattern on and the edges aren't all even so I'm just going to make sure that I have my pattern actually on fabric um, this edge is lined up pretty well so I'll pin this in place but because it's already cut I don't really want it to cut into that other square because I would be able to use that for something else so I don't want to cut a selvage out of that so what I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna go ahead and leave this <clears throat> piece where it is but I'm just gonna add a seam allowance to this edge so I can just sew that and create the diamond shape I need um, even though it won't be folded I'll just sew it across there so I think that's how I'm going to do that so we'll go ahead and pin a couple of the corners here to keep everything in place and this is kind of the one of the reasons why I bought this drawing board because it's really nice in that once you can uh, draw on it but then you can adjust the angle so that it is actually laying flat just like a cutting board and it makes a wonderful cutting surface so that's kind of handy <laughs> pieces cut out for our pants and then these two pieces are decent size selvages for doll clothing um, I might even just do a little top out of this and uh, sew it up to match or I don't know maybe a vest or something so now we're ready to sew So my pieces are here and ready the first thing I'm going to do so I don't forget is to sew this uh, set of triangles into a diamond shape and I will be finishing all my edges uh, through the serger machine I probably won't film it but because it's a cotton um, I don't want it to fray a lot so Go ahead and line this up there we go and run it through with a quarter inch 
seam allowance. There we go. That tack at the beginning and end. And I think it'll still work just fine. That'll give us our diamond shape. And I do have my serger set up to just a rolled hem um, because sometimes on doll clothes, if you get that big, wide, quarter-inch serge stitch, it, it's just a little bulky on doll clothes, so I, I do the small rolled hem. So now we have our diamond shape. So we're going to grab one of our pants pieces kind of fun doing a pattern with only two pieces. All right. Fold that and put it out of the way. All right. So let's see if I can make these look as good as they did online. <laughs> we'll try it anyway. All right. So the first piece we're going to uh, take from the end of the diamond up to where we've sewn it together. So the end of the diamond is going to go at the the ankle and it's going to sew right up to where the crotch seam is and then we'll pivot and then come back down the other leg and let's see I want to start with this edge because it's closer um, I like my fabric on the outside of my machine so we'll do it this way I know some people sew with their fabric inside the machine but I like to avoid having all that stuff in there so and I'm not even going to worry about pinning. I'm just going to go for it. So we'll see how it works here. Hopefully it'll turn out okay. All right. So we'll put it in our machine. There we go. Backpack. All right. So we're going to go all the way up to the uh, place where we're going to turn. Let's see, I think I'm going to keep my seam allowance down towards the needle. And I think, yeah, I think that's going to work. So I'm going to come up to the seam. Now we're going to lift the foot but keep the needle sunk into the fabric. And now I'm going to turn it around and... Oh, my foot doesn't want to stay down. My poor machine needs to be serviced um, because my foot doesn't like to stay up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the, that diamond that's now behind the machine and we're going to pivot the diamond so that it comes back down the other leg. And so you just want to be careful that you don't have any fabric caught in what's going to be your new seam. And we're just going to line that edge up with the leg coming down. So I didn't really move. I mean, I pivoted so I can come down the leg, but then this stays a little more static and the diamond is the piece that actually rotates around. So here we go. Now we'll come back down. But my, as far as my machine knows, I'm still just sewing a straight line. And that's kind of the trick on sometimes with piecing things together is fooling your machine into thinking it's sewing a straight line. And this is almost not long enough, but I think with my hem it'll be fine. When I hem the pant legs, I can adjust for any uh, length that isn't exactly even. So it looks like it's <laughs> got kind of a wonky thing here. See that? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the second pair, uh, front and we're going to put right sides together. Dun, dun, dun. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to line up the edge of the diamond right at the same spot, like so. But we want to make sure the one that we previously sewed is totally out of the way. So here we 
go. So I'm going to line up the, like the hemline of my pants. And then I'm going to put the edge of the diamond there, keeping that uh, front pant or the, the first one that we sewed out of the way. Oh, my poor foot. Sorry, guys. I think it needs um, some help. <laughs> and, and also, uh, I need to get a new belt because sometimes the belt just starts screaming. So if it does that, I apologize. Um, it will be loud if it decides to do it. Okay, so we're going to go here, back tag. All right. So now again, we're sewing that diamond edge to the inseam up to where we'll pivot. And it's just kind of like making like an inset little crotch fabric so that there's room for the bum, I suppose. Now, I am paying attention to the way this seam allowance lays on the diamond. So it lays this direction because I want it to lay the same way. I don't want to have it flipped inside there. So now we'll go up to the seam. Just to the thread. One more stitch. Okay. Here again. My foot will stay up. Come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'll just hold it up, I guess. Okay. So now again, we're going to flip the pants. Oh, and it decided to stay. And we're going to bring the other edge of the diamond to line up with the leg, but you just want to be sure that you don't have any of that other fabric caught in your seam from the other uh, little pants part. Uh, what do we call them? Santa pants? <laughs> we just want the edge of the diamond to line up with the inseam of the pants. So here we go. Now we're coming back down again, and I have a little bit of a wrinkle in my fabric, so I'm going to pull that snug so that we can come down like so. Okay. I will say when I watch this online, the gal who was doing it um, <laughs> wasn't the most careful, and she had like really big seam allowances, and <laughs> it was like, holy cow. Um, I guess there's a lot of mar uh, margin for error there by taking such big seam allowances. So on doll clothes, you will have to be a little more careful. All right, so we're coming down to that hem line, and we're going to back tack and pull it out. Okay, now I'm gonna run those two uh, turns around the diamond through my serger machine. So here's our pants so far, and we have the diamond uh, insert in the middle. So here's where we sewed the diamond together, and then here's where we sewed up the leg to the crotch, down the leg, then on the other piece, up to the crotch and down the leg. So now we're going to flip this with right sides together. And when I surged around this diamond sewing, I also surged across the ankle of the pant so that I have a finished edge of fabric so it's ready to turn up with a hem. So now I'm going to sew my side seams like so. And I'll go ahead and... It doesn't really matter which end I start with because they're still matching up well. Okay, now we'll hold these pieces of fabric together. Okay, 
Okay, so there's one side seam. We'll trim out all of our little pieces of thread there. Now we'll do the other side. So we'll match up our ankle and our waist. And so the other side seam. Um, I have had people ask me before, so in case you're interested, uh, my machine is, is pretty old now. It is a Janome Memorycraft 4800. Um, I got it years and years ago when my daughters were little, and uh, it's had miles and miles of fabric through it. But now I have the side seams done, so I'm going to serge the side seams and get those finished off, and then I'm going to go ahead and serge around the waist, um, because when I fold it over, I'm probably just going to tack it down, and then put my elastic in, and hem the pants, and then they'll be done. So I want this to be a nice finished edge. So when I have that done, I will come back to the camera. So here are the pants, and <laughs> you... You will probably have noticed while I was doing my planning the error that I made. And I only realized it after I had so much already sewn. I thought, I'm not going to backtrack. I'm just going to forge through. And uh, so when I was making the pattern, I forgot to divide my measurement in half twice for the waist and the ankles. So the ankles are bigger than they need to be, and the waist was way bigger than it needed to be. But since it's gathered, I thought we're going to go ahead and go with it. And we'll go ahead and put it on the doll and uh, test it out. So I did cut the elastic shorter than her waist. So her waist measurement was 19. So I cut the elastic at 17 and a half centimeters. And then I do overlap it a half inch when I sew it together. Um, so there we go. So there is the finished product on the doll. And as you can see, there's a lot of bulk around her waist because I really messed up that measurement. So I might just have to make another pair real quick and uh, see how they turn out. But I do like them. I mean, even with them being so bulky, I think they're kind of cute. And um, I think they could be a little longer. So I will also make that adjustment um, because once they're on and they kind of cinch up to her waist, uh, they could have been a little bit longer. So um, but still, they're okay. So I would have wanted the ankle to be more like this um, big around instead of this big around. So I do need to <laughs> fix that. But that's okay. It's just, like I say, I just kind of wanted to share with you sometimes when I have a, an idea that I have to go through a process to get it to work. And uh, this is how it turned out. So I still like it. I think it's cute. I will be keeping it. And um, it just looks like a real full skirt, but it is, in fact, pants. And then the, the drop crotch comes down here. I could also make that higher, I think, on the next one. I could raise the top of this point another, probably another inch. So I'll make that higher up. We'll narrow this down so that the legs aren't as uh, wide at the bottom. The other thing that I was going to uh, note 
is that I searched around the hemline, but I didn't actually hem the pants because the side seams weren't done yet. And I didn't want an uneven uh, edge at the side. But I think if we make it smaller, I'm going to have to hem those before I put the sides together or I won't be able to get that in my machine very well. That will be really a pain to do, to hem something that small. Um, so it worked because it was too big, but if we make it smaller, then I'm going to go ahead and in the process, I will serge it and hem it before I do the side seams. And then when I sew the sides together, I will start at the ankle to ensure that those are lined up and, you know, they are flush. And then if there's any unevenness, let it be up here at the top where it's going to be turned over for a waistband anyway. So here's our, our little pants all finished. Okay, and so here is the narrow version. And I didn't feel like moving everybody so that I could actually iron the seams, which I think would help. But I'm not sure now. I'm not sure if I like this one or the full one better. Maybe I need to make one like in between. And maybe, hmm, maybe I need to make the waist just a little bit fuller, but actually have an angle instead of just straight fabric so that it has more um, down by the legs. I'm not sure. So anyway, I thought I would whip up this pair. It is more of a silky fabric. So it has um, a lot more drape to it, but it this one to me almost looks too narrow. So I adjusted that and I don't know. I think I like the fuller one better. So back to my drawing board and I'll come up with something in between the two. I mean, I'll still keep this pair because I like the fabric, but I, I do think I like the other one better. Plus... I don't know, if I pressed it, it might help help it be better too. But it's a little weird. So there we go. So back to the drawing board. And uh, when I get something that I like, I'll probably put the pattern on the website. But for now, I'm still experimenting. And uh, so you can see my trial and error. <laughs> so happy sewing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.